In this video, we'll talk about distance versus displacement as an application of finding areas under curves. So assume we know the velocity of a car in every time t, we want to figure out how far the car has traveled between times a and b. So we mentioned this earlier to motivate the discussion of area, but as long as the car is always moving in the same direction, then I can find this distance traveled by just the area under the velocity time graph. It definitely works great for if you're going at a constant speed. But if not, how can I approximate this? Well, I can approximate this by saying, at every second, tell me how fast you're going. And then I will multiply how fast you're going by that one second interval. It's not going to be exactly because you could be changing speed over the course of that second. But it's going to be a pretty good approximation to how fast you actually travel if I multiply your speed at every second times one second. Because I'm going to multiply by the one second and I'll get a distance, and then I add up all those little distances to give me how far you've traveled. But this process here looks a lot like what we did in the last video to approximate the area under curves. You tell me the height at every value of x that you care about, I multiply that by the width of the interval, and that gives me an approximation to the area when I add all those up. And so we can motivate the fact that this actually is the area under that curve, because we can approximate the same way we approximated areas under curves before. Now what if the car changes direction? Now things get a little interesting. It really depends on what I'm trying to find. If I want to find accurate distance traveled, that is like what your odometer would say, then I don't want the going forward and backward to cancel out. I want to always keep adding distance whether you're going forward or backward. How can I deal with this? Well, it means that instead of adding up rectangles for velocity, I want to add up rectangles for speed, which is the absolute value of velocity. The issue here is that v of t has a sign, and if v of t is negative, it's going to cancel out some of the distance that I did with the positive v of t from before. If I don't want distance travel, I actually just want displacement, which is just where did I start, where did I end, how far apart are those two places, then I can just use v of t. Because here I want things to cancel out. If I drive for 10 minutes in one direction and then go backwards the exact same way for the other 10 minutes, I end up right where I started and my displacement is zero because I haven't moved if I ignore the path that I took. I started here, I ended here, that's a zero displacement. For distance travel though, I don't want that to go away because I want to count the fact that I drove 10 minutes and drove back. So there's the idea of distance versus displacement and how the two relate to it in terms of motion of an object. For displacement, I only care about where I start, where I end, and what the distance between those two points is. For distance travel, I actually care about what I did along the way, and I never want to cancel out if I'm looking at distance traveled, which is why I need absolute values and not just the velocity itself to make sure I'm always adding and not canceling things out as I go.